Hey writers, my name is Vanessa DS and I'm a contributing editor here at Book Riot. Some of you may recognize me from my work on the site and from the two newsletters that I edit, which are in the club and audiobooks, which you should totally sign up for like right this second. Um, but for those of you who don't know me as well, I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into my bookish journey, but without giving you like a full blown 10 minute dissertation with pie charts and graphs about like life of Vanessa. So instead, I want to talk about something I think we can all relate to and also tell you a bit about myself via bookish imposter syndrome. So quick backstory on me is that I spent the first uh, 10, 12 years of my life in a completely different field. Uh, in college, I thought I wanted to be a doctor at first and then was like, <laughs> science and changed my major to business feeling like I could do something with that, which is true. Um, so then I began my career in sales shortly thereafter and worked in management and property management all along feeling a little bit unfulfilled, but in spite of a life, lifelong love affair with books and reading and writing, I just never felt brave enough to pursue them as a career. Something about being in my thirties though, like shifted all of that mess and I finally decided to pursue it. So I've been calling myself a writer um, and also an independent bookseller for about the past couple of years. This is where the imposter syndrome kicks in. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Whether you write about books, talk about books for a living, or are just, you know, a casual reader, I think all of us can relate to these next, like, four elements of what I feel are a sometimes crippling sense of, of fake in the funk. So thing number one, uh, feeling like you aren't reading the right authors. When I walked into that independent bookstore a couple years ago for the first time, I was feeling real brand new. <laughs> I felt like I was finally in the industry and the world that I belonged in, that I felt at home in. I followed all kinds of bookish, you know, blogs and websites and, and podcasts. And I was a voracious reader. So I'm like, this is this is my stuff. Like, this is where I'm meant to be. And then someone would ask me, still ask me, for a read alike to authors like Murakami, to James Joyce, Wallace Stegner, Jeanette Winterson, the list goes on. And every time people come in there, I'm like, gay. <laughs> and then feel this like compulsion to walk around with a spreadsheet of the books I have read. Like, I know I haven't read that, but I, I have read these. See, I, I read a lot, <laughs> which is just so silly. Like, why do we feel like we're only the right kinds of readers if we read the right kinds of authors? There are plenty of us out there, me included, that haven't read tons of the classics or, you know, authors who are considered kind of movers of the zeitgeist. And the reality is that that's okay. I read a lot of other stuff, the stuff that I do love, I'm able to recommend to people. And part of really being a bookseller and recommender is also knowing how to talk about books that you've never read. So it's okay, take a breather. If you haven't read some big buzzy author, it's all right, read what you wanna read. Issue number two, is feeling a little bit of shame, so stupid, about admitting that I read a lot of audiobooks. Listen, whatevs, technicality. The fact of the matter is that if you are listening to audiobooks, you are still spending time with that book. You are consuming the content. You are spending a lot of time with that particular read. Just because you're listening to it versus actually reading the words on the page doesn't make you any less of a reader. In my personal career, having to balance working a day job at the bookstore and then also coming home to edit these newsletters and write these posts and getting ready to now be on a podcast and then producing YouTube content. I have to get in my bookish content wherever I can fit it. <laughs> sometimes it is sitting and reading a physical book on my lunch break or when I'm in line somewhere and sometimes it's throwing the headphones in when I'm at the gym listening to it while I do the dishes or clean my room. Really, if audio is your jam, jam out. <laughs> if it's not, that's okay too. But there really shouldn't be any shame behind admitting that you love audiobooks. Hell, that's why all these sites like Audible and Libby and my personal fave Libro are, you know, being so successful. So audiobooks are great. You don't have to feel like you're faking it just because that's how you choose to consume your books. I'm trying to take that lesson for myself. <laughs> Issue number three, reason number three that I often feel like an imposter is feeling like I'm not always reading the right types of books. Literary fiction, I'm looking at you, bruh. <laughs> Sometimes I love a good piece of lit fic and or a really great piece of well researched and important nonfiction. And sometimes I just want like a really juicy 
mystery. I want a cozy with an old lady who solves crimes in a tiny English village in the middle of nowhere where there's maybe a butler in the library. And you know what? That's fine. Sometimes I want YA. I want middle grade. I want sci-fi. I'm new to romance. You don't have to be reading, again, the books that are like culturally significant all the time to be considered a serious reader, whatever the heck that even means. If you're reading content that you love, that is moving you, changing you, making you laugh, teaching you something, fantastic. You don't have to have read the latest Pulitzer Prize winner, National Book Award, Man Booker. If you are, fantastic. But you don't have to. I don't have to. And last but not least, feeling like I'm not reading enough books, which again is just so silly considering everything I just told you about how much bookish content I consume. Let me tell you about the time that I became friends with tons of the Book Riot contributors on Goodreads, feeling like a baddie about the fact that I read anywhere from 50 to 75 titles a year. In my personal circles, that is considered super impressive, or as my brother puts, more books than he'll read in a lifetime. But then I started looking at the number of books that these girls were consuming in a month, and it sometimes rivaled what I was reading in a year. Some of these people out there are reading like hundreds of titles, which to be honest, looking at you Liberty Hardy gave me a huge complex. I'm already packing in books into like my every spare moment of the day. And because of the fact that I have a day job that consumes a lot of my time and have a lot of responsibilities, it's just not feasible that I'm going to read more than that. For me personally, others will. Some of you may only read two books a year and that's totally fine. The number of books that each of us consumes has zero to do with whether we are considered readers. If you're reading a book, you're reading. That's kind of it. But again, these are four things I have to constantly remind myself of in my bookish life because sometimes I feel like I'm faking it and how are these people paying me to do this? But again, at the end of the day, I'm doing a good job. You're doing a good job. We're all readers and we're loving it. That's kind of all that matters. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.